afternoon, everybody, and thank you for that welcome. Uh, my name is Jemima MacDonald, and I work at the Centre for Disability Studies uh, at Sydney. Uh, the Centre for Disability Studies is a non-for-profit organisation which is affiliated with the University of Sydney. Here I coordinate the Uni to Beyond initiative. So Uni to Beyond gives adults with an intellectual disability the opportunity to participate in university life and really experience everything that there is to do at Uni. So this presentation will address the importance of these initiatives, the model of full inclusion that we follow, and I'll talk about the initiative a little bit more in detail. And then at the end, we will have a, a bit of a Q&A with um, my lovely guests here. So You Need to Beyond is very much based on the human rights perspective. Um, and as Australia um, has signed the UN Con Convention on the Rights of People with Disability, uh, we want to enact that, and particularly at the university level. So there's one article in particular that uh, we like to pay reference to, and that's Article 24, and that's all about education. And there's just a couple of points here that I want to highlight. Um, and that's that all people have the right to an inclusive education system at all levels, uh, the right to lifelong learning, the right to full development of human potential, strengthening of respect for human rights, fundamental freedoms and human diversity, development of personality, talents and creativity to their fullest potential, and effective individualised support measures are provided in environments that maximise academic and social development consistent with the goal of full inclusion. So, so oh, that didn't work. Stepping back in time, people with intellectual disabilities have generally been excluded from university education due to not meeting criteria for traditional, traditional enrolment. So not being seen as academically capable to learn at a, in a university environment. And typically, a university environment was not seen as the appropriate environment for people with intellectual disabilities to achieve good adult outcomes. Instead, what's on offer in Australia for people with intellectual disabilities once they leave high school are some options and support through the TAFE system, and then mainly segregated options that focus on community participation or building vocational and life skills. So now whilst tertiary education is fairly novel or even cutting edge in Australia, it's certainly nothing new. So in America, we, we can see there with that beautiful map, um, in America there's over 240 colleges and universities uh, that have some kind of initiative similar to this. And they actually have an established coordinating centre called Think College. Visit their website, it's pretty cool. Uh, in Canada, they've had over 30 years of evidence-based practice and we often focus very much on Alberta um, and that's where there's the family advocacy organisation Inclusion Alberta and yeah, they've been doing it for over 30 years and within every university or college in Alberta has something similar. There's some initiatives in Europe including the Certificate in Contemporary Living uh, at Trinity College in Dublin and that's where the director for the Centre for Disability Studies previously, um, before coming here, she was there uh, working on that initiative. And when she came over to take over the Centre for Disability Studies, uh, You Need to Beyond was one of the first things that uh, she decided to start up here. Uh, and then there's also the vocational diploma at the University of Ireland. Then in Australia, uh, we have Up the Hill Project, and that's by Flinders University, and it was established in 1997. So it's been running for quite a long time. Um, it's a really good initiative. They have a smaller cohort of students. So, so if anybody here is from Adelaide, they have about four or five students every cohort. And then we have Uni to Beyond, that's us. We were established in 2012, um, and we currently have 11 students going through the initiative, and we've seen 33 students go through since the initiative began. So we know that worldwide there's been a rise in tertiary education and it, that's really promising. However, we also know that there's a really varying range of practice in how much the students are actually included. So for example, of those 240 in America, uh, there still is only a very small number that are fully inclusive models. And I'm gonna talk about kind of the couple of models uh, in a couple of slides. Um, we've got Bruce Uditsky and Anne Hewson, and they're the ones who started up um, Inclusion Alberta in Canada, and they constantly remind us 
that just being present on a university or college campus does not actually mean inclusion. Um, and there's a growing number of advocates and scholars who are calling for tertiary education initiatives that are really built on shared values of inclusion. So here's our models, and because we're kind of all in, I think, the educational setting of that's, you know, where a lot of us are learning about this, we do know about the models, um, but there is the separate model um, where students attend the tertiary setting but take part only in subjects with other students with disabilities. Then we've got the mixed and hybrid model where students participate in social activities and or classes with students without a disability but then they also take part in separate classes. And then we've got the fully inclusive model, where students receive that individualised service in order to fully participate in academic courses. And that's either for audit, so we study for interest, or for credit, um, and also participate in that university life. Um, and Inclusion Alberta, among others, Others have always described this as the authentic experience, and that's what we're really trying to do with Uni to Beyond, is that fully, fully inclusive model. So this is kind of our framework for Uni to Beyond. It all looks, you know, like there's lots of parts, but I'm going to talk through um, each part uh, a little bit. So currently Uni to Beyond facilitates the university experience for 11 students. Um, it was, fun, it was founded by Professor O'Brien, sorry, <coughs> Professor O'Brien in 2012. Um, and since 2012, as I said, we've seen 33 people go through the initiative. We've seen, I'm going to talk about the mentors in a little bit, but we've seen over 170 mentors be involved in the initiative and there are other university students who spend time with our students. And we've seen over 25 faculty staff, so we're really seeing this inclusion on campus really growing. So I'm going to start with the pink section. So our students participate in lectures and tutorials. Uh, we spend a lot of time at the start of semester working with our students and doing a lot of goal setting with them, finding out what their interests are. Then we go away and we collect every single first year subject when they're in first year. Now they're in second year, so first and second year subjects. But we go and we collect every first year subject that's available with, uh, on the campus. Um, so our students really guide us as to where we go. Um, they participate in lectures and tutorials. The tutorials are optional. So quite often the students when they first come into the initiative will just sit in the lectures until they start getting more confident and then perhaps they'll move more into the tutorials. As I said, we've got this huge mentor support. So each student, quite often, um, I feel like a matchmaker at the start of each semester when I'm matchmaking all the students to mentors. Um, but each student is matched with about from one to five mentors. So they're just your typical university student who puts their hand up to want to be involved. Um, and the one to five depends on how often that student can be on campus, how many subjects they're taking, all of that. And there's two types of mentors. So there's the academic mentor, they sit in class with our students, they might help take notes or just be a friendly face in that class and help make friends. And then we've got the social mentors and they might join a club of society, go to coffee, um, go to the pub on campus, whatever they decide what they would like to do. Um, because they're audit students, which means that they study for interest, they don't have to submit assignments or sit exams. Um, but they do work on an individualised project and they do that uh, with our tutor and they meet with our tutor every two weeks. And not only do they work on a project, they also, um, she looks at all their materials and makes it more accessible. Um, so say somebody isn't very good at reading and that's not their strength, then she might find some YouTube clips to look at. So she really tailors it towards their strengths. Um, and she sets homework for them. And then at the end of semester, we have this beautiful semester presentation night where all of our students get up and present for 10 minutes. And you know, it doesn't need to be verbal presentations. It might be a song. Um, it might be wh whatever they decide is how they want to express what they've learnt. And then, of course, the university social life. So I kind of covered that off before. But yeah, it's very much we had some of our students doing a lot of the marriage support rallies last year, uh, refugee rallies, clubs and societies, whatever it is that they would like to do. And we can support them to do that. This is kind of the in the background stuff. 
Um, so I'm talking to a lot of families and supporters tonight, uh, today, and our families and supporters really play such a crucial role in the planning, the coordinating and the advocating uh, for the uni to be on students, but then also us as well. So without them, we wouldn't exist. We've got some staff. So we've currently got three part-time staff and they vary in the range of hours that they work. Um, we've got the program tutor. We have one paid mentor, so one young uni student who's running around on campus and he's there just as a backup if we need. We've got a volunteer social media collaborator because I'm not very good at social media, and so they will help us. Um, and then the workplace facilitator, and I'll talk about that in a second. Then we do a lot of this person-centred planning. Um, so we do a path with our students every year. Um, we do lots of one-page profiles, what's working, what's not working, and we really revise these and work with the students so that um, we're all on the same page. And it's not just about what they're doing at uni, it's about what they're doing in their whole life. Um, I think that's important for us to know so that we can support them at uni as best as we can. Then in 2016, we piloted some internships because we were really looking at the students and seeing what they were doing and seeing a typical uni student. And what we realised is that your typical uni student is going and doing internships um, at kind of in their final year of university. So in 2016, we piloted two and we found that they were really great and really effective and those two students got jobs quite soon after they finished uni as well. Um, so then in 2017, we won a small grant through our local council, City of Sydney Council, and now we're starting to really roll out those internships for whoever would like to in our initiative. So I think we've done three or four, and we've got a lot more to come in the next year. And that really supports that job readiness skills and the transition to employment. And that's really that beyond, when we talk about uni to beyond, that's really preparing them for that what's next after uni. So we have the workplace facilitators. Um, these are the uni students that might have stuck around for quite a few years with us. What we're seeing is our mentors. Um, there's, there's a handful that really support us and stick around for quite a while. Um, and so we, I guess, reward them, I don't know. Um, we pay them to go along with our students to the internships and support them at the internship and provide that one-to-one -one support uh, with the idea that it gets faded out um, at the right time for the student and the organisation. Um, then we have the workplace mentors and they're chosen within the organisation and they're the role model for the student and they provide that support and the guidance and the jobs, like the task lists and everything. Um, we do a lot of working with the organisation before providing education um, around disability and inclusion in the workplace. So. So the outcomes, lo and behold, the outcomes for our students are just like your typical university student. Um, so there's a growing evidence base of positive outcomes, including lear increase in learning, increased independence and confidence, gaining of important life skills, feeling accepted and integrated, making friends, and our students are much more likely to get a job and earn a, earn a much higher income. So how we run this, if we look at it, uh, the overseas models in Canada, IPSE stands for Inclusive Post-Secondary Education, it is all government funded, so no student needs to um, spend any money to get in, it's all government funded. In US, they typically charge a tuition fee, but then there's a lot of financial aids available uh, for the students and families to support the cost. Uni to Beyond was funded under state government, um, so that was Aging Disability and Home Care, Family and Community Services from 2012 to 2017. With the closure of that department, we did lose our funding. Now we operate under a very big mix, so of grants and government funding, of NDIS funding through students' individual packages. We're able to do that because the students are non-enrolled students, so they are not um, by the university system, they are, are not enrolled. Therefore, it is a social inclusion initiative where one of the benefits is academic learning. Um, corporate scholarships, so we have a number of uh, corporates who support what we do. 
And then we do crowdfunding. And in a second, I'm going to show one of our stars of our show for one of our videos for our crowdfunding. We have a couple of challenges that we're constantly, you know, coming up against but working through. There's a lack of research and advocacy in the Australia, Australasian and Asia Pacific region. Um, but kind of watch this space. We, some other people in my organisation are currently working on what's called a photo tales project. So some of our students, I think Karim's involved, um, are going around and taking photos of what university's like and then we're going to do some analysis and get some research out about that. There's a lack of legislation and policy underpinning principles of inclusive tertiary education in Australia. And then there's a lack of a movement, and I guess that's why, again, I'm here today to kind of push that as well, um, that there's a lack of universities throughout Australia taking out inclusive tertiary education. So yes, we've got two, but that's in you know two states. I feel like this could be a national thing, and I feel like we've just got to kind of get the ball rolling. So next, oh, this is going to play straight away, so I'll let you hear this. I wanted to come to university to learn new things and be a part of university life. I never thought I would go to university, but here I am, where I feel like I belong. Yeah. My favourite thing about university is studying yeah. Aboriginal music and history. Uni 2 Beyond gives me the skills to become independent be part of creating our future. I always was excited for uni even though I had no idea what to expect. Starting uni took some getting used to but it has become the most fun learning experience so far. Wait one second. The next question is what is your, what's your favourite part of being a uni student? And I apologise because this might be a bit different to what's on the screen. My favourite part of being a uni student is just being on campus and having the freedom to do what I want at uni. Getting lunch and hanging out with friends in my classes. I really loved the major work program I did last year. I had the opportunity to focus on a project of my choosing with the help of four education students at Sydney Uni helping me. We made a picture book based on a poem by Ujiru Munakal and we presented it. That was awesome. awesome. And then what's been challenging, Karim? <coughs> In the beginning, I found that travelling to uni was a challenge. Me and Cameron had to figure out how to take public transporting and also how to be on time. We had mostly ironed out all the flaws. Recently, I've been having trouble keeping up with my assessments. Even though they are non-compulsory, I like to challenge myself and try them as best I can. And finally, what advice would you give others who dream of going to university? My advice is, just go for it. If you have any concerns, it's so easy to get information. You can go online or take the opportunity to ask Jemima now. It may seem risky or like a leap of faith. But trust me, there is nothing to fear. 
You can go at your own pace and there's tons of support. Get out there. Challenge yourself. Awesome. Can we give a round of applause? So next I just have some questions for Evelyn. And unfortunately Evelyn's uh, daughter Kylie was not able to make it today, but um, she's amazing and she's stepped up and she's coming down. Thanks Jemima. <laughs> questions, please. <laughs> All right. Was university part of your vision for Kylie? Why do you think university has been a beneficial environment for her? No, it was not part of my vision for Kylie, but she grew up in a family where her father and sister had both graduated through university. Um, yes, and we lived in Canberra for many years until 2009. Um, but um, I just think, uh, sorry, the question was... Um, um, why do you think university, university is a beneficial environment for Kylie? It's, it's just been the real world for Kylie, and um, she has been living independently in a rented apartment uh, an hour's walk from Sydney Uni for just over three years now. So um, she's got the benefit from the beginning of the day of walking through King Street Newtown to get to uni, which is, you know, an experience in itself, but wonderful. <laughs> um, and um, I think then, yes, it's the routine of getting the coffee before class, meeting the mentor, um, and just then being absolutely absorbed by the lectures and the subjects she's been um, able to access, it, it's been phenomenal. She'll come home and phone me at the end of the day and um, sort of say, did you know this and did you know that? And talks about all these incredible things that I don't know about um, from the art subjects she did last year. This year she's chosen really what have turned out to be um, very complex subjects but she's been handling it, and Jemima knows that there might have been a bit extra input from both our parts to get her through some of the, the difficult things, but um, the growth has just been enormous. The confidence has been phenomenal, and uh, it's just all very exciting. There you go. So you've kind of answered my next question. Oh. So what changes have you seen in Kylie? So that confidence? Yeah, the confidence, the growth, um, the awareness generally, uh, being able to mix in the real world, um, feeling part of that, that whole university community, I think. Um, just learning, learning an incredible amount. Yes. What has changed for you as a family, if anything, as a result of Kylie attending uni? Well, I mean, um, just as a matter of um, the time uh, that I would have been involved with Kylie otherwise. She's very actively involved through the university for three days a week. Uh, she's also attending um, the university gym. She has her plan now funding the exercise physiologist there. That's just another you know, part of the whole university experience, the FUNCH experience is um, a very inclusive experience. Let's talk about what lunch is. So yes. every Wednesday we have what's called a fun lunch um, and it's something that happens on campus as well um, but for us we've kind of set it so that it can be a little bit more supported um, so they get notifications of where to meet and it's all the students and mentors and they all get together. If something's happening on uni then they'll go and do it otherwise they'll all hang out at Manny Bar and have lunch and just chill. Um, and I just think, um, you know, the mentors have been wonderful. They all, as you have obviously had a lot of involvement in selecting them to work with the different students. Um, Kylie gets on very well with them all and enjoys their company, even if they are younger than her, she says. She, Kylie's 38 and I guess the students are a bit younger, but she can tolerate that. Um, and, um, and yeah. My final question is, why do you think it's important for initiatives like this to be available? And what advice do you have for families who want to support their son or daughter? Well, unfortunately, families have to lobby for everything, as we all know. Um, I didn't have to lobby for this. It came along at a very timely uh, stage of Kylie's life. She's had several ups and downs over the years, and um, she'd had a bit of a low time for a while in the work sense and when we heard about this uh, she applied for it, we applied for it. She was ecstatic when she got accepted and really um, the, her confidence and uh, ability to feel included in the real world 
has just grown enormously. And of course that's had the beneficial impact on the family as well because she's now following her own path, she's able to do a lot of her own homework independently. We talk about it, but she's taken on a lot of that responsibility for herself as well. It's been really exciting. who is uh, Karim's mother come along today but unfortunately she's quite ill and so I'm just going to read a couple of her answers. She felt horrible that she couldn't be here so late last night she was sending me emails with some responses so I just want to chuck these up and say some and then we'll open it up for a couple of minutes of questions. So they're the same questions but um, was university part of your vision for Karim? Uh, why do you think university is beneficial? So she said, we never imagined that Karim would go to university as we thought that his intellectual disability would exclude him from this experience. When I discovered the Uni to Beyond program, I was astounded by how innovative this initiative was. It aspires to give people with an intellectual disability an opportunity to experience university life. Univi university provides Karim with a meaningful, purposeful and age appropriate opportunity to be a part of the mainstream community. Friendships, social activities and education all take place within this inclusive <coughs> environment. So what, if any, changes have you seen in Karim? So Karim has been attending university for just over a year now and he's flourishing. He has developed new interests, met new people and is experiencing the social and educational opportunities that university provides. He loves going to university and he is developing and deepening his interest, which interests, which is also leading to a new and meaningful life pursuits. We are getting to know yet another side of our son which we never imagined and that is a reassuring and positive message for us. Karim will continue to experience and learn new things if he is given the opportunity. What has changed for you as a family member? Our two other sons also attended university so it is amazing for us to see that Karim is part of a family tradition. We see him as fulfilling the same life experience as his brothers, which is something that we never would have imagined as possible. We see him growing and becoming increasingly independent. We now see that given time and the right environments, he will be able to continue developing into the future. And finally, before my voice goes, why do you think it's important for initiatives like this to be available? And what advice do you have for families who want to support their son or daughter? University is so important, not just for the person with the disability, but for the whole community. Of course, there are many benefits for our son, and these are important. But what we have seen is that this experience is a reciprocal relationship. The students that he has met and worked with, along with his support people, have also gained so much out of the experience. It has provided meaningful opportunities for future teachers, for example, to develop a meaningful relationship with a person who has a disability. I am sure that this will change the way we see children with disabilities in their classrooms in the future. This program is transforming communities and there should be many more initiatives like this throughout Australia. Thank you. Thank you.